Hi guys, Micro here. This is my RuneScape 3 tips and tricks number 7. I'll leave a link in the description to the playlist of my tips and tricks if you haven't seen any of the other videos. Lots of helpful little tips in every single one. So let's get right into this one and hopefully a couple of these tips help you. The first tip, probably my favourite one for this episode, is making your spirit gems get consumed by your charming imp when you get them as a drop from any monster. So if you have your Charming Imp on your tool belt or if you have it outside, just go to the settings, open up the Charming Imp settings and configure Spirit Gems. He'll say, oh, I'm currently not taking any Spirit Gems. They're all yours. And then you'll be like, hey, I want the Imp to keep the Spirit Gems. And then he'll say, that's great. Have a good day. And all of your Spirit Gems will be consumed by the imp and you'll never have them cluttering up your inventory when doing anything ever again. So if you're 200 mil summoning or you're 99, 120, you don't really care about XP, then toggling these off is definitely super helpful. The second tip, another very good one for anyone who does a player own farms, you can buy woad leaves off of Wilson the Gardener in Fally Park. You can just right click him, buy woad leaves and you can buy 10,000 at a time. That will cost you 250k and they're only 25 GP each. Anything that eats flowers, this is the cheapest way to feed them. And it's amazing for Iron Men on top of that. So, so good. The next tip is one that is used heavily if you're hopping worlds. So if you press escape, you can go to the hop worlds menu and it takes a while for it to all come up. Then you can hop worlds, right? But you can actually keybind the hop worlds menu. So if you press escape, you go into your settings, go to your controls. And if you scroll down to the bottom of your controls, there is a windows and navigation menu. On this menu, there is one that's literally called open world select. You can add a keybind for this. So for example, if I add the keybind being like F6, then every time I try and hop worlds, if I just press F6, it opens up the menu with no extra fuss. That way you can then go into your settings, you can toggle off the free worlds and then just click on whatever world you want to go to. So if I'm in world 68, I want to go to 16, I can just click it and you can hop from each world one by one and just do it in a really easy way this way rather than you know going through all your settings and stuff. Definitely helps when you're hopping away from PKers or you're hopping to find a spot at a Slayer location or something like that. You can just hit that keybind, open up the menu, hop to whatever world you want. The next tip is something that I discovered while doing a podcast recently with Protox, Wazzy and Ravlar, and that is keybinding your special attack, but without putting it on your ability bar. So what a lot of people do, including myself, is grab the special attack ability from your HP ability tab and just drag it on your bar. So if I put it on like Z or something, I could then use the special attack, right? But if I press escape, go to settings and go to controls, if you scroll down to the bottom of action bar controls, there is literally one called special attack. You can keybind this to whatever you want and then your special attack will be keybound to that without having to drag it on any of your action bars and freeing up a slot there. Very, very useful and just leads to being much easier. As long as you memorize that bind, you know you can always do your special attack with that. Regardless of whatever bar you switch to, whatever combat style you're using, you have it keybound for everything. A cool tip that a lot of people know, but it's decent for the people coming back to the game that may not be aware that this is a thing. If you're buying an item on the GE, you can type M for million and K for thousand. So for example, if I wanted to buy this Armadil chain skirt at 4 million, I can just put 4M instead of having to type out all of the zeros. Or if I wanted to buy a specific amount of runes or anything off the GE, I can buy 25,000 air runes by just typing 25k instead of typing the whole number. It's just a little thing that I find really cool and it's good for people returning that may not be aware. Another one that's pretty helpful for people who have just started ports, and I didn't realize when I first started ports that this was possible with the captain's log. The captain's log can be opened and you can do your ports voyages from inside the log. The only voyages you can't do from the log are story voyages as they require you to go to ports to see like the storyline unfold. Every other mission can be done with your log. This is good because once you first start ports, you're doing your missions like every hour or two. You don't have to go back. You can literally just open up your captain's log, go send your people out on the next mission via here while still maintaining your Slayer spot or doing whatever you're doing in game without having to go back to ports every 
hour or two. It's only a little tip and I know a lot of people know it, but it's helpful for the people who have just started ports. The next tip is one that came with the comp rework. Even if you're not maxed, not comped, whatever, you can now buy the spirit cape from the Dungeoneering store for 45,000 tokens. This spirit cape used to have to be worn for its effect, but now it's a passive effect with the comp rework. So this means when you buy it, you permanently unlock the passive effect of familiar's special attacks being permanently reduced by 20%. So if you use a Titan anywhere at all, even if it's just to like go on Dungeon 2 and stuff, it's so worth getting this cape as it's super cheap and 100% worth it. And as you don't have to wear it, you can literally just put it in your cape rack in your player own house and it won't even take up bank space and still give you the passive. It's absolutely amazing. The next one is a super useful tip if you want to do any type of AFK smithing. All you got to do is make loads and loads of unfinished smithing items and you want to make sure you either do gloves or boots. The reason why you do gloves or boots is because they take a short amount of time to create. And now that you can make multiple unfinished heated items by just right clicking, opening up the smithing interface, pressing space, heating up the item to full heat if it's not automatically at full heat. If you're at the higher level bracket of each tier of ore, then you're always going to be heating it to full heat instantly. Otherwise, you may have to spend some time heating up all of these items. So obviously, it'll be faster if you're at the higher tier because you'll instantly heat the items. Once you've heated up all the items in your inventory and you have loads of unfinished, you just click the anvil and go AFK. It's literally that AFK because as soon as one is finished, you can start on the next one. I would advise bringing some power burst of Master Stroke though, as you can use a dose every two minutes and it increases your experience by 36%. Really, really awesome and really, really amazing item to use. And it's super cheap. And as you can see, as soon as one item's finished, it automatically starts the next one. And we've already heated the next one to full heat. So you just get all your full heat back and get the maximum XP every single hit again. This works fantastically, especially if you have super heat form prayer and stuff like that to go alongside it. That makes it even better. My last tip of this episode is one that I find super helpful in so many situations. So for example, if you're mining anything and you have an ore box, if you click that ore box in your inventory, it stops you mining. That's really annoying because then you have to click the rock again and it just gets frustrating, right? Well, if you're doing an action and you keybind things, it does not interrupt like if you click them in your inventory. So for example, I have my Elder Rune ore box on Z now. And if I press Z, it fills up the ore box and I don't stop mining. This can be used in so many different areas as well. And it's just one of those things that's really, really helpful, key binding certain stuff. Another example would be soul obelisks. If you eat a food from your inventory, it stops you channeling the soul obelisk. If you put it on your ability bar and you eat the food off your bar, it doesn't stop you channeling. Same applies with stuff like power burst of master stroke. If you click that power burst, it stops you smithing. But if you have it on your action bar, you continue your smithing with no interruptions. It's just a little thing that's really, really helpful in my opinion, and I love this. That is it for today's episode. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, feel free to comment them down below. I'm always searching for more tips and tricks to share with everyone. Hopefully you learned one or two things from these tips. Give the video a like if you did enjoy this video, and as always, until next time, see ya.